This is going to be about the cross product, but it's actually it's uh, a little bit of an involved story that starts out with thinking about area and volume. And we're going to come back to this when we um, study determinants for real in the linear algebra context. But I want to start with area in two dimensions. And I want to think about what are the simple objects, the simple geometric objects we can describe using vectors. Because, of course, that's what we're doing. Um, the whole name of the game is what can we do with vector algebra to answer geometry questions. And this is not something we've addressed yet. Well, the simplest figures, certainly the simplest figure would be a square or a rectangle. That's really simple, and we're going to use that as a basic example, but we're going to actually skip a little bit faster than that. Uh, a triangle, you might, might think, is the next easiest thing. But, in fact, what we're going to focus on is how do we uh, take a vector, let's say, A, and a vector B, a natural figure we make with that using vector algebra, and it's geometrically natural as well, is parallelogram. Actually, I should put this A over here. Okay. And we want to get the area, let's say big A, of that parallelogram. So what I'm going to do, there's a way to derive this really from pure geometry, and I think we're going to do that when we start talking about determinants uh, the second time around. But what I want to do is give you the formula for this and then uh, justify it. And the formula, let's see if I can fit it in over here. Um, if vector A is, let's say, A1, A2, and vector B is B1, B2, well, let's think a little bit about what, that, what things that should satisfy, okay? And then we'll put the formula on the next page, maybe. One is that A should be proportional to the magnitude of A and should be proportional to the magnitude of B. And so that means, for example, if I double the, these coefficients, it should double. If I double the Bs, it should double. If I double both of them, it should quadruple. Okay? That's a word that my son has just, had just learned. I don't know if you'll remember it, but anyway, we're talking about quadruple rocket cars, because those are pretty cool. Anyway, um, that's one of the things that A should, be, sh should satisfy. Another thing, is that if A equals B, what do you think A should be in that case? Think about that for a second. Let's draw a picture. There's A, and there's A again. How big is that parallelogram? What's the area of that? It's zero. And in fact, even if B is some scalar multiple, multiple of A, then A should be zero. Okay. So that's some, some stuff that should be true. There's other stuff that's going to turn out to be true, of course, but let's see. Put that on the screen. Okay. So, something like that. Um, here's the formula. It's going to be A1. Oh, let's get this right. Yeah. A1, B2 minus A2, B1. And that looks kind of weird. It kind of looks like a dot product, but with the thing switched and a minus sign. And that's not completely accidental, but that's not the best way to think about it. What you usually do is you form a little 2 by 2 matrix. This data of two vectors very naturally sits in terms of a matrix. And this is something you've seen before, but have, I think very little significance gets attached to it before this. It's called the determinant. And um, the determinant sometimes is written with vertical bars insta instead. That's not a very good notation because it's not obvious enough that this is a matrix. It has four different entries. This is a certain function applied to that matrix. This is actually stands for a number computed from these four things. It's not the data of the four things separately. Another way to say it that emphasizes that it's a function of that 
full matrix of data is you just put the word death in front of it. It's the determinant of that guy. But no, both notations are popular. Um, and that is defined to be the product of the diagonal entries minus the product of the off diagonal entries for a two by two. Okay. Now, um, let's think about if this has some of the properties we want and maybe some properties that we didn't expect. First of all, we put here. If this, if I'm claiming this is the um, the area, it's definitely proportional to a. If I double the entries of a, it's gonna this is gonna double. If I double the entries of b, I'm gonna get a two factor here. It's gonna double. If a and b are the same vector, I'm gonna get a1 a2 minus a2 a1. That's definitely gonna die. Okay. And even if I have a multiple, let's try that. I'm going to take the determinant of a1, a2, r a1, r a2. That's going to be r a1, a2 from these guys minus r a2, a1 equals zero. Check. Okay. So it's zero in the right in the right fashion. And one thing that that's very very important is it it really tells you why that minus sign has to be there. It's very very different from the dot product. There's no way it would have this property of vanishing when the two vectors are the same or scalar multiples, in other words, parallel, if it didn't have a minus sign here. So that's a good thing about the minus sign. But one of the things that's a little weird about the minus sign when you first encounter it is the fact that it depends on the order of the vectors and that this can very, very easily be a negative number. So let's do some examples. Um, if I have Let's do the most simple example first. If I have 1, 0, and then 0, 1 in that order, that's a square. A equals the determinant, oh, determinant of that matrix, and that's equal to 1. That is the area of the unit square. That is another property we certainly would like, and it's true. Good. Okay. But what if we just writ, wrote them in the opposite order? It's exactly the same picture. But instead of this being A and this being B, let's call this A and this B. And we get uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Huh? Is that such a good thing? Well, it turns out that a lot of the time it really is a good thing. So, but I really should go back and be honest. So obviously, this isn't just the area. It includes something else. It's what's called the oriented area. Okay, and that's really what the determinant of a two by two matrix is calculating. It's the oriented area of the parallelogram formed by the, these vectors that are the rows of the matrix. Okay, so it's really the oriented area, and the rule is that if when you write down when you look at your parallelogram, if it looks like this, where going from A to B is a counterclockwise rotation, that's always what we consider to be the positive sense of a rotation, then that means that this oriented area is positive. But if um, you write it in the other way, like here's A and here's B and here's your parallelogram, and that that rotation is a clockwise rotation, that was CCW, this is clockwise, then we say the oriented area is less than zero. The good thing about this is that if we really only cared about the area, we know what to do with this. We know we just take the absolute value. This is extra information. That's the least, that's the least uh, annoying problem that people usually have, is to get extra information. As long as you know exactly how to erase it. And we do, just take the absolute value. But we're going to see time after time, actually, when we deal with these kinds of things, that we, might, we may be surprised sometimes to find that actually, no, we actually care about the orientation. There's a really good use for that in most cases. Okay. 